In this video, we're gonna show you how to make a choose your own adventure template for Google Slides. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, education for educators. This channel's all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If it's your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you like what you see today. Okay, choose your own adventure stories are some of the most popular books around with students. It's not linear, it's a situation where you read through the book and you make decisions here and there, and they end to different endings based on what you choose. They also come in handy as a fantastic project for students to work on both in writing, organization skills, the possibilities are endless. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a template for a choose your own adventure project using Google Slides. Quick disclaimer, if you're looking to skip all the hard work and just get your hands on a set of beautiful Google Slides templates ready to assign to students, I've got that for you. Check out the link in the description below. It'll send you right on over to my Teachers Pay Teacher store. It's beautiful. But if you want to do it yourself, let's get going. Step one, determine the structure and layout of your story. It's gonna get frustrating really quickly if you haven't already settled on a fully finished structure for your story. You're going to want to know how many endings there's going to be, how many choices you need to make, and how each page is gonna to link to the other pages of the story. Are you gonna have a warning page? Are you gonna have an about the author page? This is especially important because with choose your own adventure stories, they're not meant to be read in a linear fashion. You don't just go one, two, three, four, five. You're hopping around. Here's a sample layout this is what I use on my particular sets of templates. You're free to use this. I'll drop a link to the picture in the description of the video. Once I have a solid understanding of how many slides I'm gonna need and where I'm gonna put them, I can then start going into my Google Slides project and begin setting up the structure. Step two determine exactly how many slides you will need. So the key here is not having additional slides, having more than you need or not having enough. You wanna know exactly how many you're gonna need right off the bat. Again, if we're using the example structure from before, we would need 17 slides. So from your template, you're gonna to want to have a completely blank slide and duplicate it. Cause if I sit here and just go add, 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 add until I have enough, I'm gonna to have to go into each one and start deleting all these boxes. And I don't wanna to have to do that. So instead, the way around that is I highlight and delete until I have a completely blank page. And then I just click on the slide and hit Control D for duplicate. Now I have an exact blank duplicate that I can just copy over and over and over. And I'm gonna do that until I have 17 slides. Now that I've got the structure down, I'm ready to move on to start working on my backgrounds of my slides. Step three, design your backgrounds separately. The single biggest headache you can give yourself is trying to design your backgrounds and art elements within Google Slides. So here's an example. I made this on my Google Slides presentation. It's pick your own pathway. It's got a picture of a computer here. It's got a little emoji, but notice how each individual object is its own thing. It doesn't take but one move for me to accidentally move it, to grab it, to drag it, and I have to keep hitting the undo button. When students go in to work on this and they start inserting text boxes, it's so easy to accidentally just grab and move things around that it's gonna frustrate them. I've seen this lead to tears with kids on many, many occasions. Unfortunately, and you can see here when I right click, there, there's no option for freezing it to the screen. You can't lock these things onto the screen. The only way to lock something is to go to the background and change the background. So the solution for that is to use an alternate program. Now I'm using Canva here. You can use PicMonkey, you can use Adobe Acrobat, you can use Microsoft Paint, old school if you want to. You can use just about any program that you have available, but the purpose is to design your backgrounds first using a separate program and then save them as pictures. That way you can use them as the background. So you can see here on this, I've got all these elements on this pick your own pathway page, not to mention that Canva has tons more cooler objects and things to insert. It gives you way more choices to make it a lot more interesting. But once I'm finished, all I have to do is hit the download button and save it either as a JPEG or a PNG. PicMonkey looks a little bit different, but it gives you the same option. Adobe Acrobat will give you the same options. You just save it as either a PNG or a JPEG file. Now, once we're back at the Google Slides page, all we have to do is hit the background button and then we're gonna choose the image. 
and then we're gonna upload it and pick that background page that we just saved. Now we've got a background here and look, no matter what I do, it's frozen to the background. It is the background. So now I can insert text boxes on top of it. I can do whatever I need to do to start creating my actual project. And it's not being intruded upon by things being accidentally moved. Now going back to my design setup, it's really important to notice that I'm doing all of that ahead of time. I've made one slide for each page that I need. So I've got a warning page, I've got an introduction page. You can see I'm kind of copy pasting the backgrounds and just tweaking it. So here I've got page two and I know where my choices are gonna go. I know this click's gonna go to choice five and this click's gonna go to choice four. And just as a reminder, I know these things because I've got my layout right here. So I know that if I'm working on designing page three, I'm gonna have to make a choice that either sends me to page seven or to page six. So when I'm on page three, I know that design page is gonna have to have a three in the top corner and a choice to go to seven or six. And as you can see here in my design page, I've got page three right here and choices to go to either page seven or to page six. Having that structure is super important. Once I've got them all, then I'm just gonna download all of them at one go. And then I can go into my backgrounds and insert them. So now I've gone through that process and I've added all the slides that I need for the entire project. It just takes a second to just click background insert. But as you go through, all my pages are in order. They're ready to go. And on any given page, no matter what I do, the backgrounds are frozen. Step four, create hyperlinks for your story pages. In order for your finished story to work, it has to have clickable buttons that take you to specific pages when you click on them. Keep in mind that for Google Slides, this is when you're doing this in presentation mode. You're gonna go to present, and then when you click on the buttons, it's going to take you directly to that page instead of going from one slide to the next to the next, because that's not how a choose your own adventure story works. The way we create clickable buttons is to create transparent shapes that we overlay on top of the design page buttons. And how we do this is we're gonna click on insert, shape, shapes. Now you're gonna to wanna to pick a shape that kind of fits the shape of your object. So these mouse objects and the light bulb kind of are ovalish. I'm just gonna go with a rectangle though. And then what you do is you draw the shape right on top of the button. Now right away you're gonna notice that it's covering it up. So we have to make two quick changes to make sure that it's transparent. The first thing we wanna do is go to the paint can up top where it says fill color. We click on it and at the bottom we're just gonna say transparent. And now you can see that the fill has been taken away. But when I click away, you'll notice that I still have that outline. I wanna get rid of that as well. So I'm gonna click on the object. This time I'm gonna click on the border color and I'm gonna do the same thing. Click on transparent. Now you can't see it at all. It's there, but you can't see it. The next thing to do is to link it. And yes, you can take a shape and you can link it to another slide in the presentation. So in this case, we wanna link it to page two. Before we do that though, one thing I wanna point out is that page two here is not slide two. You gotta remember the difference. Yes, we're linking to page two, but we gotta look over here and figure out what slide is that. And in this case, it's slide four. So we really wanna link it to slide four. So back on the object, we're going to right click on it and we're gonna to go to link. When I click on link, it's gonna ask me where I wanna go. I'm gonna go right down here to slides in this presentation and I'm gonna choose the slide that I want. Again, I wanna to go to page two, but page two is on slide four. So I'm gonna click on slide four now, once I've linked the slide, you can click on the object and you can see that it indeed is going to send to slide four. Now we've got some options here. We can copy the link in case I want to send it to slide four again. I can edit the link. So if I clicked on the wrong slide, I can just click here and I can change where I want it to go. So you can change that link at any time. It's not hard to do. You can also unlink it if you don't want to use it anymore. But now I have an active working link that when I go into present mode, it's going to take me exactly there. Let me show you. Here's that page in present mode. When I hit enter to go to the next slide, it goes to page two. But from here, I don't want to go to page two. I want to go to page four. So if I hit enter again, it doesn't take me to the right place. It takes me to page three, which is what a slides presentation would do. It would just go to the next page. However, in present mode now, you'll notice that when I hover over it, it goes from a arrow to a pointer because now it's a clickable button. So when I click on it, it now sends me to page two 
which was slide four. So it sent me exactly where I needed to go. Now, one thing that's difficult is that each page has three buttons. And if I have to create every single button without shortcuts, it's going to take a while. So one thing that I like to do is just copy paste the button. And then all I have to do is change the link. So in this case, I'm gonna click on the button. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it. So I made another one and I'm just gonna take it and drag it on top of my other button. So now I've got a copied button, except it's going to slide four. All I have to do is change the slide because slide four is not page three. So when I'm here, all I'm going to do is click on edit, change the slide to slide five. And now it's fixed. When I go to my next slide, I can just hit the paste button again. There it is. And hit the paste button again and drag it over. See how quickly I just made those next two buttons? So now when I click on it, again, edit the link, slides in the presentation, change it to six. Page five is gonna be slide seven. So I'm just gonna change it to slide seven. And just like that, I've made my next set of buttons. And then all you have to do from there is go through the rest of your presentation until you have all your buttons linked and you have a fully finished template ready to go. Hey, you, watch more videos, huh? See you next time in Mr. Cook's Corner. Bye.